What's up guys, we are Tottenham TV here and we are back with another transfer video. And so let's get right into it. Before we do that, let me just shout out my our merch. We've now launched a merch site. We've got t-shirts going on. You can just take a look here. My personal favourite is the Tian Vertonghen t-shirt. Um, I think they look pretty cool. I really like the designs. We just go into it. Um, we all really, really appreciate it, all the support we get and I quite like the design. I think it's a pretty cool t-shirt, but check it out. Link will be in the description below. Check out on Teespring our t-shirts. But let's get into the transfer news now. And here a bit from Sky Sports. It says, Tottenham patient on Ryan Sessegnon move from Fulham. Now, most people would think that the main point people have taken from this story is the um, whole Ryan Sessegnon thing. But so we'll get into it and tell you why Ryan Sessegnon isn't the most important part of this story. Um, it says, Tottenham are staying patient in their pursuit of top left back target Ryan Sessegnon. The 19-year-old is, is, is understood to want to join um, Richard Pochettino this summer, putting Spurs at the front of the queue to sign him. But after skewering Tang Indombele and Jack Clark, the club now need to move players out to make room in the squad and secure funds. So now this is the most important part. Among those available is left back Danny Rose, as he as he and others returned for pre-season training on Monday. Fulham are also standing firm on their valuation of Session so far, while Tottenham would hope to negotiate a lower fee. So the clubs are yet to enter direct talks. All right, so it looks like we're in for Ryan Session, but the thing that has got um, people going uh, today is that among those available is left back Danny Rhodes. And obviously, a lot of people, a lot of Spurs fans um, are big fans of Danny Rhodes. I, th I think he had a really good season last season. I think we, had, we saw signs of him back to his best. And it would be a real, real shame for him to leave. I think he's probably our long, longer serving player now. And given the fact. Uh, ben Davis has just signed a new five-year deal um, alongside Harry Winks. It does look like if, if that looks like we, we, we would be willing to uh, shift Danny Rose. This got a, he a whole um, hashtag got out on Twitter. Don't sell Danny Rose. You, as you can see here, don't sell Danny Rose was a hashtag that was trending on Twitter. And we'll go through a few of them. This is last word on Spurs. Retreat if you're in support of Don't Sell Danny Rose. See a lot of support coming in from him. A lot of people, oh, it's a great moment. A lot of people don't want him gone. I think maybe if a deal for like 30 million came around, maybe I'd consider um, Danny Rose selling. But I I don't know. I wouldn't want, I really don't want to see him leave. Look at all these great moments he had. He really is Tottenham. I think he shows a lot of passion for him. For him. No, no, reason, no reason to not see this again. This is amazing. This is his Premier League debut. To think this was so long ago. That volley against Arsenal, absolutely amazing. He was outspoken um, a lot uh, two years ago, but I think he's kind of reined it in a bit, and I do think he's happy here. I do think he'd be willing to uh, stay. Um, so it'll be a bad, sad, sad loss. I would like to, I would like to see him stay personally. If Pochettino is, if that's his decision, I would back it. If he thinks that we need some new blood and Ryan Sessegnon is the way forward and signing him for around 40 million and getting rid of Danny Rose for, say, 25, 30, that's not the end of the world. I would like, I think Danny Rose has been a great servant to the club. He's been here since 2007. It's a long time. And the question is, if we do sell him, where do we go? I know he's one of the best left backs in the league, but again, he's on the, he's getting close to 30 now. And given his troubles, uh, you know, pu publicly, um, over the past um, you know, year or two, he's, he's even expressed publicly he's, he's had problems with mental health and things, which probably, unfortunately, in the sad reality, probably didn't, doesn't help him. As, as, he, as he said um, on the radio uh, not so long ago, that when he was talking to another club and in potentially leaving Spurs, they asked him about his mental health and asked him if he was crazy. And he said that was he was very offended by that uh, suggestion and... Um, and he would never consider signing for a club like that. So it goes to show uh, where, where the, what the situation is at the moment. It's a tough one. Really, is a tough one. Um, I, I, th I think I think the best place for Rose is is to stay at Spurs because I think he, him, and Pochettino have a good relationship, and I think that he knows the Tottenham system. He's been here for a while, but if. Again, as I said, if Pochettino really believes the way forward is to sell Danny Rose and freshen up the fullback areas, then you have to you have to back him because Pochettino went. I can't I can't think of a player that we've let go who has gone on to who we've gotten gone on to regret letting go, except for maybe Carl Walker, who it wasn't exactly in our control, was it, that he wanted to leave and 
um, he kind of forced that move. Um, so apart from that, I can't think of too many players who uh, Pochettino has sanctioned a move or, is at, who, or has been willing to let go. And we have regretted that decision. So, um, you know, you think of people like Andros Townsend and uh, they, I think, have been pretty good sound decisions to let them go. Um, so I back Pochettino in this regard. But me personally, I do like... My mum was a massive fan of Rose. I thought last, at the end of last season, he was getting back to his best, even in the Champions League. He was putting him in some really, really strong performances. And um, it would be a shame to see him leave. But it looks like we're going to have to sell to buy if we're going to buy any more in this transfer window. So, remains to be seen. We'll see you in Danny Rose. A, a lot's going to happen from now to the end of the window. But let's move on. We've got an um, article here from Football London, our, you know, Alistair Gold. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter. He's very good, really good on Tottenham news and he's usually pretty accurate. Although he did say Lucas Moura wasn't going to happen and that didn't end up happening. But um, he has written about what you can expect from the last month. And there's a few interesting tidbits in here um, in regards to the two midfielders we're chasing. Um, so in regards to Giovanni Lo Celso, he says... Um, Lo Celso has now ended his time at the Copa America after Argentina finished third in the competition. Um, the 23-year-old is believed to be keen on working with compatriot Pochettino, but the move depends on his price tag. Obviously, we all know he's got 88 million release calls, but Real Betis are believed to be looking for something more around the 70 million mark. There are also reports that PSG retain a 20% sell-on clause for Lo Celso, which is making the deal harder. So that that's interesting. It could it, a, bit, a bit similar to the whole Zaha situation, where United um, have a 25, 20 or twenty five percent sell on clause um, on Palace of any deal on Zaha, which is driving the price of Zaha up. It looks like um, Real Madrid, um, PSG have a similar clause in this contract, which would mean which would prop, which is going to mean that Betis were going to go for every last penny you'd think. Um, Spurs have are not inclined to spend more than they did on Ndombele, which was 63 million, all inclusive with the add-ons and everything, um, which is which is interesting because obviously we bid, I think it was well known uh, uh, about a month ago now, we bid 53 million for Lo Celso, which was rejected by Real Betis. Um, I think it was 53 million, including all the add-ons and everything. Um, so there's not much wiggle room left if we're if we're gonna say look we're we're not going over what we spent on Undombele which is 63 million, um, but the fact that Bet is apparently asking for 70 million, um, only seven million difference on price that does uh, appear that a deal will probably be done in in it could be negotiated in if there's only seven million apart so this could drag on but another interesting bit is obviously Danny Sebelos who we are. Um, who we were reportedly after. Um, then there's who, who used to play for Betis, actually. Madrid signed him from Real Betis. Um, is, Alistair Gold is saying, Football London understands there's a serious interest from Spurs in the 22-year-old fielder who's also keen on a move to Spurs. However, the complication in this deal arises from a belief in his homeland that the player only wants a loan move away, f- away for a year before seeing his future um, seeing what his future holds in Madrid, which is, uh, which is a worry because we... As, as Alistair go, goes on, it says Tottenham are unlikely to sanction any loan move for him unless it contains an option for them to make the deal permanent next summer. As Pochettino would not would not want to block any Spurs players' progress for a guy who's only going to be in the team for a year, basically, for a passerby in the team. Which makes sense. I think Pochettino is the kind of guy who demands loyalty from a team, demands everyone being on the same page. And if one player is going to, um, only going to be there for a year, why would he block any progress for someone who's um, pr- who's prepared to be at Spurs for the long term and is really fighting for a place for a Tottenham who's um for a who why would he give that player's spot to a guy who's ultimately playing to playing to fight his way into another team's first 11 which wouldn't help anyone so uh yeah that that would be a worry in this deal if he does, if he's not looking for a permanent move, there is another theory in the midfield merry-go-round in that Betis are also keen on bringing Sebelos back to the club where he made his first strides. With Tottenham, with Tottenham looking at both players, Lo Celso and their reporter target Sebelos, will provide some interesting dialogue between the three clubs' hierarchy in the coming weeks. So I think that's quite interesting. Betis wants are interested in bringing Sebelos back, even on loan to Betis. We want Lo Celso, who's currently playing at Betis. And Madrid are the ones who currently have Sebelos, uh, and 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 there obviously is another sti- uh, another sticking point that Madrid want Ericsson, 
who, which could complicate any deal for Sabella. So I think there's a lot of negotiation going on, um, probably going to be going on in, in that deal. You know, we could, we could want, we want uh, Lo Celso and we could tell uh, Betis that we will pull out the Sabellos deal if, you know, they lower their price for Lo Celso and, and that would allow them to get uh, Sabellos on that or loan or whatever the deal is and allow us to get Lo Celso. But then there's all the Madrid and Ericsson and it's, it's going to be very complicated. Obviously, Madrid, uh, apparently Madrid are, t- are talking with Ericsson about 70 million. We want about 90 million. Unless it's low, unless Sabellos is included in the deal, so it could get really, really complicated in in the next coming weeks. So it's going to be remain to be, yeah, we will remain to see what is is done in those deals. Uh, we'll carry on reading the article. Uh, there's a lot of, there. Uh, Alistair talks about the rumours regarding Danny Olma from Dynamo Zagreb. He said there's nothing in them. He's not convinced that that that's uh, real. That's going to happen. A lot of people saying a deal is agreed with that. That's about Alistair Gold saying that's not true. Uh, Roma's um, Nicola Zaniolo is another player linked to Spurs. Um, while Spurs have tracked the sto- uh, while Spurs have tracked him, the stories including a swap deal for Toby Alderweireld don't make sense. Alistair is saying Alderweireld has a 25 million release clause, which ends in two weeks, two weeks before the window shuts. So Tottenham cannot logically negotiate his transfer with any club before that time, unless, uh, unless it is a bid for less than that amount. Yeah, that makes that makes sense, because why wouldn't Roma just bid the twenty five million? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Why would they? Uh, why would we offer him uh, in a deal with Nicola Zaniolo if Roma really wanted Alderweireld? They could just bid the release clause. On Alderweireld, the the other issue this summer of Tottenham will be waiting and reacting to those who leave the club. On the fringe, on the fringes, moves are being made to try and sell Yanton and Inkudu. But the most important de- departure decisions will come from the trio of Alderweireld, Eriksson and Trippier. If Madrid enter serious negotiations with Eriksson, who is currently away with Denmark, then Spurs will use the, um, that in their quest for Sabellos, who becomes more of a pressing need if the Dane moves on as he wants. Alderweireld's departure could prompt one of two scenarios. Either the club could all out and sign an experienced centre-back, or Eric Dyer could move back to centre-back as his opportunities will be limited um, with Ndombele's arrival. And then we he goes on to explore our right-back options, as we're apparently we're eyeing up Max Ahrens um, as a replacement for Trippier, with Aurier moving to first-choice right-back and Walker Peters heading out on loan. However, the longer it takes for Trippier to move on, the stronger the likelihood that Ahrens will sign a new contract at the newly promoted Canaries. Um, it's also useful to go say how Juan Foyth has received rave reviews at the Copa America. Um, and Lionel Scaloni, the manager of Argentina, has even suggested Foyth's long-term position could be a right-back. So that would be interesting if that's something we want to see more next season with Juan Foyth right-back. Because I thought he did quite well at the end of last season um, in his a few appearances there at right-back. So I, I'd be keen to you know try him out there a few more times. I think it could, it could really be a good uh, place for him. And then he talks about you know the Ryan Cecil and Danny Rose situation, which we just touched upon. Moving on to Danny Sebelos, though, um, is even talking in the mirror here. Danny Sebelos transfer talks between Tottenham and Real Madrid are very advanced. So there are rumours hotting up that Sebelos, I suppose, could really be a go. I think there's, a, there's been a lot of reports on Twitter which is not always the most reliable source for news. That, uh, but, but a lot of reports coming out of Spain that Spurs um, are getting really close to agreeing a deal for Sibelos. Um, the only I like, I like him. I like Sibelos. I think he's a good player, a lot of quality. Uh, but one thing that does worry me a bit about him is his best performances have been at Spanish, at Euro Under-21 tournaments for Spain. Now, that's not to say that under under twenty one uh, tournaments are rubbish, but it's that when you when you're basing um, a player's performances just on under twenty one performances uh, for tournaments, you could get um, bitten. I think I think you, it could screw you over a bit. I think you get sometimes you can get a false impression of how good this player is, and that's how he pretty much got notoriety. Sabel through these under twenty one tournaments last in two thousand seventeen, he got player of the tournament. This time around, Spain won it again, and he got um, in the team of the tournament again. He was one of the stars of the show. He is only 22, so he's very young. Um, he's got a lot of time to develop. Um, then again, you know, Ndombele is 22, and he's our record signing. So, you know, sometimes age 
is 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 different for everyone but uh how i mean in terms of how they develop but um I don't know. I've got question marks around him. I think I, th- I th- would I want him as my replacement for Ericsson? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Um, I think the jury's at, still out. I think I think if Pochettino wants him, um, I, I'd be happy with the signing. I don't think he would be a bad signing. I just have, still have question marks over how good he is, given that his best his best performances have been at under twenty one tournaments. So um, that has to remain to be seen. Um, but all right, that is your transfer talk for the day. Let us know what you think of Danny Rose. Do you want us to sell him? Would you be willing to let go of Danny Rose if it means bringing in Ryan Sessegnon? And let us know what you reckon about Danny Sabellos. Do you think he's good enough to replace Ericsson? Are you convinced by him? Let us know in the comments below. Check out our t-shirts. Check out the merch. Go buy yourself a t-shirt. And as always, come on, you Spurs. <laughs>